I've been playing a lot of indie games on the Nintendo Switch and many of these games are just never mentioned anywhere on the internet. So I thought what better way than to start a series on my channel and it's gonna be all about Nintendo Switch eShop games that you have never played. Hello lovely and welcome to the first episode of the series. I'm Stephanie aka Miss Bubbles and I create weekly videos covering reviews, before you buy, sales and so much more. Consider squishing the like and subscribe button so you never miss a bubbly video again. First game on the list is called Everspace. Now I have shared before that I really enjoy space games and I think that we need more, especially when it comes to the Nintendo Switch because games like No Man's Sky, Elite Dangerous, Starbound and many others are just non-existent in there. However, we do have something called Everspace and it is a space combat shooter that I have had my hawk eyes on for so long. So the other day I saw it on sale on the eShop and I was like okay this is the time to finally try it. Now this one is not the best if you're looking for an in-depth story but it's definitely definitely fun if you're looking for something that will give you plenty of gameplay content. The premise of it is being able to buy and enhance your ships while fighting outlaws in space. The story chapters are called sectors here and each brings a new piece to the story while also increasing the difficulty of the enemies that you're trying to face. Now this is a roguelike game and you're gonna expect to die a lot so don't get pissed off when you're dying too much because every time you do you will get better perks and abilities and you can also upgrade your ship parts if you have a enough money and you can also buy bigger, better, stronger and faster ships to make you a better player. You can also go ahead and upgrade your weapons, stay on the lookout for fuel while traveling and repair your ship which does cost you credit but also credit is easy to stumble upon because when you kill enemies you will find some just flying around in space. Now you will meet a lot of NPCs on the way and all of them have objectives and a lot of quests for you to complete and that will make you a better bubbly pilot. And you can also take part in something called hardcore run and it is perfect if you're looking for a challenge but be aware it's gonna kick your bubbly booty very easily. I also like that they have a built-in achievement system because you know the Nintendo Switch four years later still does not support trophies so this is perfect. Nintendo actually needs to get it together a little bit am I right? <laughs> so yeah if you're looking for a fun space game check this one out and if you have a PC then go to Steam right now search the word Everspace 2 and the developers are actually making a new game and it's an early access and it is gorgeous. I highly recommend that you buy that one as well. Next up is Neo Cab. You play as Lena in a cyberpunk futuristic California and you are actually the last human being who still drives a car because all of the other cars and taxi services have become automated. So now your best bet is to actually do a really good job, keep getting five star rankings in order to keep going and earn a living. You have your phone and on it you can choose who you want to pick up and every character will share with you some of their story while you have a conversation with them. Now in these conversations you have the choice to decide what you're gonna say whenever a character asks you something or says something and everything that you do actually does have consequences on you. It's gonna have consequences on how the drive is gonna go, how many stars you're gonna get, how much money you're gonna get and also what kind of story bits you're gonna gather. So it's gonna be up to you if you're gonna be nice or you're gonna confront people or you're gonna say certain things and there's also a very high emphasis on how the emotions and the expressions are gonna be because because the developers actually studied how facial expressions and body language is gonna make you know if someone is lying or someone is happy or someone is moody or whatever kind of mood they're in. Just the way your passengers emotions are important also your own are very important too and you can watch them on your watch and you can see what kind of color you're getting. If you're getting like red it means you're angry, if you get yellow it means you're positive and so on and your mood will also determine how you're gonna be able to answer because some choices you cannot use them if you are feeling certain feelings, right? And I love that aspect because it taps into how we deal with our emotions as human beings and I love when games do that. They kind of try to blend games with real life experiences and make you know that being mad is okay and sometimes your emotions are gonna impact the way that you're gonna be talking to other people and how you're gonna respond to different situations. Now another thing that's gonna happen is that as you go through the gameplay loop, you also have a main story because your best friend has vanished and you're trying to find her. And this gives you a very intriguing story that you get to experience. I also want to point out that I love the graphics here. It's very purplish, cyberpunkish. It looks really nice and I love the attention to detail that the developers have put into this one. And fun fact, the developers did get in touch with real Uber drivers and they asked them how they managed to get 5 stars, 3 stars, 1 star in their rides and they do integrate these systems inside the game. The music is also very relaxing and 
and it sets the mood for the entire journey and you know I'm always someone who values good music and I just put on my headphones and I have a really good time while playing this one. So this is another fun title that I just don't see a lot of people talking about and I just don't know why. You definitely need to try it and it's always on sale so why not check it out? Let's take a minute to congratulate Nathan because he won our previous $20 eShop card. Nathan, thank you so much for always supporting me, always having a chat with me down in the comment section. Please email me or reach out to me on Discord so I can share with you your code. Thank you for everybody who participated and do know that we will be having more competitions so you might win next time. So the other day, one of our Bubbly members asked me to check out a game called Road 96. Now I knew that this game existed but I was very hesitant about it because first I saw a lot of bad reviews because it was very political and second I I knew that it had a lot of difficulty running on the Switch and on other systems. However, I then decided to just contact the developers and give it a try and little did I know that this one is one amazing gem and I know that a lot of people who do not stand with the political aspect of this game are gonna hate on me but honestly I'm all about telling you what I enjoy and then it's up to you if you're gonna go ahead and buy this game or you're gonna skip it but let's talk about this one a little bit. Now you are basically one of the missing teens in 1996 and you're trying to cross the borders to escape from a very bad regime. So you try to hitchhike your way across the map but the fun part is that every single road trip is procedurally generated so no road that anybody's gonna experience is gonna be 100% the same. Now as you try to move through the land you will meet a lot of different characters and you will learn more about them with every playthrough based on the way that you will find them and how you're gonna interact with them. However, you also need to maintain some survival aspects such as eating, drinking water, and resting. But I will let you know that it's not very difficult. It's actually very easy to maintain these things. So if you are worried about the survival aspects of the game, they're really very easy to handle and manage. You will start with a little bit of money and then slowly you will find yourself having more money to buy food, get a ride, hire a taxi, get a bus ticket, and so much more. You can go ahead and steal people's money or be loyal to them. You can go ahead and choose which regime you're gonna side with. You can explore the world and collect tapes. You can also unlock abilities that will let you hack, pick locks, gain a lot more HP and so much more. So the possibilities are really endless and I really love this game. I'm actually gonna do another playthrough and I'd love to stream it with you guys because it was so fun. Everything that happens can get so chaotic within minutes and you just feel so immersed in the game. I do want to say however the game runs much better in dock mode rather than handheld and it's usually the other way around so I'm not sure what's going on here and I do want to let you know that the game does suffer a little bit from frame drops but really I was so tolerant of it and I don't know why I think the game was that good that I really didn't care but I do hope that the developers will go back to it and fix it but it was an amazing experience my heart was racing all the time I was so immersed in the game I was so connected to my character and I actually ended up getting caught <laughs> and I like I reached the border and I got caught and I was so pissed off like oh my god I went through this whole journey and I ended up like getting caught because I couldn't uh, hold my breath long enough so they found me hiding in the truck I really recommend that you check it out and please devs just fix what's happening with the game like frame drops and stuff there is a lot of potential and I think more people need to know about your game the next game that we're gonna be talking about is called Beholder and today we're gonna actually talk about Beholder 1 now this is one that really took me by surprise and I had no idea that I will enjoy it as much as I did now you're basically Carl, a state-installed landlord in a totalitarian country, and you're responsible for taking care of a building and keeping an eye on your tenants. So you're actually an agent. Now the funny thing is that you do not need any sleep because your government decided that they're gonna give you a chemical which makes you operate 24-7. So you're a 24-7 operating human being and you can monitor everybody all day long. Here you can choose if you want to be a good landlord who is loyal to his tenants or you want to be a good citizen and a good spy and you want to answer to your government or you're gonna try to find a balance between both which is actually very difficult to do. Now to spy on people you can place listening devices, steal and sneak into their apartments and much more and once you gather enough information you can report what you found to the government to get a payment but things again are not that simple. You also happen to have a wife and kids and they have their own needs as well as sometimes expenses to cover and this is where your morality and values and as well as as knowing that you need to take care of your family's needs will come as a determining factor in how you will
will work. Now do know that you are at risk of dying, getting caught, having tenants leave the building, having them hate you, having the government arrest you, and much more. So your choices are very important here. For example, let's say you see suspicious activities and the government actually asks you about certain someone. Now you can go about this in many ways. First, you can go ahead and report what you know to the government and they will reward you with money and reputation points which will let you buy more and better advanced gear. However, when you do that, this person can have a daughter and you are resulting in orphaning a child. Or number two, you can go ahead and withhold the details about any illegal activities that are happening and give him the chance to make it right. But he might not actually want to make things right. Or you can go ahead and blackmail him and get some money because you know your kids might need money your kids might need medication or whatever so really everything that you do is very important and along the way you will be meeting a lot of people and all of them have a lot of quests for you to complete and these all will contribute to them either liking you or disliking you and it will help you form a story altogether i really recommend that you check out this game it has a very beautiful soundtrack and the characters and the graphics are not something that i'm used to they're kind of like black silhouettes just walking around but you still feel a lot of emotions coming out of them and it was really fun experience for me and another game that i rarely see anybody talk about death and taxes in this one you are responsible for who lives and who dies sounds grim i know i know not with these lame jokes and puns again but I, that's me i'm sorry <laughs> let's carry on <laughs> this is a 2d short narrative based game and you assume the role of the grim reaper as an office job <laughs> your choices hold major consequences and you have a mystery of your incarnation to solve. Now every day you will go to your office and you have a bunch of people to evaluate if they are worth living or not. Your boss will give you a daily quota which adds a challenge. So for example some days he might want you to kill at least one scientist, other days he might want you to kill eight people when you only have nine to evaluate. So you are choosing from nine people only one person to live. So it really adds your immersion into the game. You evaluate these people by reading a short summary which covers like their name, their age, career, and morals that they followed in life. And whenever you comply to the challenges of the day, you will earn money and you can use that money at a store to buy items. The storyline can go in different paths based on the choices that you make and every day you can check the news and see how people died and what impact of their death has made on the world. Now the awesome thing is that the NPCs are fully voice acted and you can feel their emotions and the music is excellent. This kind of music actually reminded me of The Sims. It had this kind of hotel music. I just don't know what the type is called, but it is really nice and it feels just so ironic that there you are, you know, deciding who's gonna live and who's gonna die and you have this music going on in the background and you're like, what the heck am I doing right now? But yeah, this is another game that is really, really good and it goes on sale almost every single time that there's any eShop sale. So I really recommend that you check it out. This one's a very unusual set of games that I've been playing and it's a little bit different from the bubbly and cozy games or the RPGs that I usually play but I really love experiencing different genres and playing different types of games and I think this is part of why I love video games so much because every single title always impacts me in a different way. Now are you gonna buy any of these? Have you played any of them before? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to give a very special thanks to all my Patreons. Thank you so much for the pledges that you are giving and very special thank you to Faye, Fantasy dreamer and justin for the support it's a wonderful day to play a video game stay bubbly stay positive and i will see you in the next one bye